I'll be giving you all the tools that you need to get a perfect score on the SAT or ACT trigonometry problems. Also, this video will serve as a good introduction for anyone up to the AP or college level interested in learning more about trig. If you're interested in taking your studying to the next level, head on over to my website, CrestTutoring.com, where I offer one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions via video call. For the next 10 students who apply, I'll be offering 50% off of our first three lessons together. One of the first tools you gain, which is essential for trigonometry, is the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now, the A and B and C in this equation correspond to the two legs of a triangle and the hypotenuse. So if we draw ourselves a triangle, the hypotenuse would be of length C and the two legs will be of lengths A and B. Now, if we draw another triangle and we say that we have side lengths of one and two and we wanna solve for the hypotenuse X, then all that we need to do is take one squared plus two squared and set that equal to x squared. We know that one squared is just one, one times one is one, and two squared is four, two times two is four, and we add the two of them together to get that five equals x squared. To solve for x, all that we have to do is take the square root of both sides. And what we end up with is that the square root of five equals x. Therefore, our hypotenuse is equal to the square root of five. We can also do a more complicated example, this time including polynomials as our side lengths. If we take a triangle and we set one of our side lengths equal to x and one of our side lengths equal to x plus one, and we're given that the hypotenuse is equal to five, we can use our Pythagorean theorem and a little bit of algebra in order to solve for x. To do that, we take x squared from the bottom leg plus x plus one squared from the side leg, and that equals five squared, which we know is 25. Now, we need to foil out this component here. So to do that, we take x plus one times x plus one which gives us x squared plus 2x plus one. And then we can still take down this x squared here from the bottom. So you get x squared plus x squared plus 2x plus one equals 25. Now, we just combine like terms and wanna get all of our values onto one side of the equation. So we get 2x squared plus 2x minus 24 from subtracting over the 25 equals zero. Now for our next step, we can pull a two out. We get two times x squared plus x minus 12 equals zero, which means we can just cancel out this two because zero divided by two is zero. And now we're finally nearing the finish line. We just need to factor out x squared plus x minus 12, which means we need to find a set of two numbers that add together to equal the coefficient of x, which is just one, we'll draw that in green, and multiply together to equal negative 12. We can think of two numbers like that. Negative three times four equals negative 12, and negative three plus four equals one. So our answer is negative three comma positive four, which therefore means that our zeros, our solutions are x equals three, negative four. Now we know that we're dealing with a triangle, so it doesn't make sense for a side length to be negative. So we can forget the negative four. Therefore, x equals three is the answer. Moving back up to the triangle, we know that x is equal to three. So that would mean that the sides of this triangle are three and four. But we can test this to make sure that it's true by plugging those values back into the Pythagorean theorem. So we take three squared plus four squared equals five squared. And if this is true, if this works out, 
then we know that our answer is correct. So three squared is equal to nine, four squared is equal to 16, and five squared is equal to 25. So this is true, and we know that our answer is correct. Now the next aspects of trigonometry that are important to understand are of course the trig functions themselves. These are sine, cosine, and tangent. As most of you probably know from SOHCAHTOA, sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. Now, what does this mean in the real world? Well, theta is just an angle, and then opposite, that refers to the side opposite of the angle, and adjacent refers to the side that is touching the angle, that is not the hypotenuse. So if we draw ourselves a triangle, and we are given an angle right here, in this bottom corner that I'll mark off as A, well then, the opposite side is over here, the adjacent side is right here, and then the hypotenuse is right here because the opposite side is the side opposite of angle A, and the adjacent side is the side that is touching angle A that is not the hypotenuse. Now remember, the legs of the triangle, the opposite and adjacent sides, these are the sides that are touching the 90 degree angle. The hypotenuse is always opposite of the 90 degree angle in a right triangle. Now let's give an example. If we have a triangle and we have an angle A, and let's say that that angle is 35 degrees, and then we're given the opposite side, which is two, and then we'll have some unknown adjacent side, but we'll be figuring out the hypotenuse. So we'll say the hypotenuse is X. Well, in that case, the trig function that we would use is sine because we have the opposite side and we want to find the hypotenuse. Now, if we had the adjacent side and we wanted to find the hypotenuse, then we will be using cosine because it has the adjacent side right here. And similarly, if we had the opposite side but wanted the adjacent side, then we would use tangent because the opposite side is right here. So whenever you're trying to find out which trig function you should use, you need to consider what you are given and what you are trying to find. You should be using the trig function that contains the components that you are given and the components you're trying to find. So here we have that sine of 35 equals our opposite side, which is two, divided by our hypotenuse, which is x. Now we can do some simple algebra and multiply over the x, giving us x times sine of 35 equals two. And then we wanna divide over our sine of 35. We have x equals two divided by sine 35. And plugging that into our calculator, that equals approximately 3.5. Now, note that if we go back to our original triangle here and we call this angle B, well, because we know that a triangle contains 180 degrees in total and the 90 degree angle plus the 35 degree angle would be 125. If we take 180 minus 125, that gives us 55, which is this angle here, B. Now, this is key because we can also find the same value X by utilizing cosine. Cosine of 55 equals our adjacent side, which is two divided by our hypotenuse. Therefore, we get the same thing from before. X equals two over cosine 55. And again, we find that X equals approximately 3.5. This actually brings about one of the most important trig rules for the SAT and the ACT. There are many different trig rules which are outside the scope of this video, 
But we will at least talk about this one really quickly, which is simply the relationship that sine of an angle, theta, equals cosine of 90 degrees minus that angle, theta. Right? Because 2 over cosine of 55 equals 2 over sine of 35. This is one trig rule that I've seen used again and again on the SAT. And so it is one that is worth memorizing. There are many others and they all have their value. We'll go through a couple more that I think are particularly important before the end of this video. Now, understanding just our trig functions isn't enough. We also need to understand our inverse trig functions. Now, these are very similar to the trig functions. The only difference is that instead of using them to find a ratio of sides from an angle, you use them to find an angle from a ratio of sides. So let me show you what that means. If we take sine inverse of opposite over hypotenuse, again, referring to our side lengths, then we will be left with theta. Similarly, cosine inverse of adjacent over hypotenuse also equals theta. And finally, tan inverse, you could probably see where I'm going with this, of opposite over adjacent equals that same angle theta. These are all different ways to find an angle. So now, if we go back to our previous triangle where we had one side length of two, and one side length of 3.5, or a hypotenuse length, then what if we try to find this angle here? Well, we know it should be 35 from our previous problem. Say that we want to find this angle, and we call it theta. Okay, so from our inverse trig functions, we know that the correct trig function to use here is sine inverse of opposite over hypotenuse. So sine inverse of 2 over 3.5. And if you plug that into your calculator, you will see that it equals approximately 35 degrees. Now, before we move on here, I want to clear up one quick thing that often confuses students. And that is the fact that sine inverse of opposite over hypotenuse is not the same as sine of opposite over hypotenuse all raised to the negative one. Now, sine inverse is equal to arc sine and equal to a sine, which is just short for arc sine. This is made even more confusing by the fact that sine squared of theta does equal sine of theta all taken to the second power. That's true for all other values put into the exponent place. It's exclusively for the case of sine inverse that this special rule applies. So just don't be caught off guard. If you see something where they show sine inverse in a problem, you need to be thinking of the sine inverse function on your calculator as opposed to sine of an angle raised to the negative one. They're different things, and it's important that you not get confused by that. Now, before I move on from the trig function section, there are just three more trig functions that I wanted to quickly mention so that people are not caught off guard by them. These are secant, cosecant, and cotangent. And these are simply equal to one over cosine, one over sine, and one over tangent. Now, it's just important that if you see these used, you are not caught off guard by them and you know what they are. So they are also important to memorize, but they are less commonly used in early high school math than sine, cosine, and tangent. In this last section, I just wanna focus on a couple of different facts that you can memorize in order to more quickly answer certain types of trig problems. So none of the stuff in this section is mandatory, for example, on the SAT or the ACT, but because the time limit is so tight, knowing these things can give you a definite edge. So first of all, we have our special triangles. And these are the 45, 45, 90, the 30, 60, 90,
and the 345. In your 45, 45, 90 right triangle, you have side lengths of one, one, and square root two. Now, remember, these are just proportions. So in a triangle that had side lengths of two, two, and two root two, that would also be a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. For our 30, 60, 90 right triangle, we have side lengths of one, two, and square root three. Again, we're dealing with proportions here. So you could have a small leg of length two, a hypotenuse of length four, and a long leg of length two root three, and that would also be a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. And finally, we have a three, four, five right triangle, where the two legs are of lengths three and four, and the hypotenuse is of length five. It's worthwhile to memorize each of these types of special triangles, especially the first two, as they are very commonly used in trigonometry questions on the SAT and ACT. Next up, I just wanted to quickly mention a couple of trig rules that come up occasionally on the SAT. One is that cosine squared theta equals one minus sine squared theta. Another is that sine over cosine equals tangent. And finally, one that I mentioned earlier, sine of theta equals cosine of 90 minus theta. The opposite is also true. So cosine of theta equals sine of 90 minus theta. These three trig rules are essentially the three most important trig rules when dealing with the SAT or ACT. There are many, many more trig rules. Some of them get very complicated, but that's outside the scope of this video. I'll provide a link in the description to a list of all the different trig rules that exist, but you won't be using these until you enter into higher level pre-calculus or calculus courses. Now, these are just purely memorization until you get up to higher level math where you'll be able to derive them. And that's it. Do you have any questions that I didn't answer here? If so, feel free to ask them down in the comments and I'll be quick to respond. In addition, if you like this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing if you'd like more content like this. With that being said, thanks very much for watching the video and keep improving those scores.